Welcome everyone to the Muskie Sports Network for Coffee with Coaches presented by Jennings Java. I'm Tom Caudill and joining me today is Muskingum Women's Across Head Coach Lindsay Grunfast. Coach, welcome to Coffee with Coaches. Yeah, thank you. Excited to be here. You know, Coach, you know, we were talking about it a minute ago, Jennings Java. Um, Jennings, Daniel Jennings was a men's soccer player here on campus. He founded the company here. Uh, freshest roast around, best experience. If you're looking for great coffee, JenningsJava.com. Uh, Coach, you know, this is an opportunity for our fans, the Muskie Nation, to get to know you a little bit better um, as you head into your first season here at Muskingum. Uh, when you think back, back to the childhood, uh, how did you first become involved with lacrosse? Yeah, that's a, a great question. Uh, I actually grew up in Ithaca, New York. Um, so picked it up for the first time when I was in second grade. Um, you know, so back then it was really just passing catch. Uh, that's really all I remember about it. Um, and then we moved to Socrates, New York uh, when I was 10. We did not have lacrosse, didn't even give it a, a second thought. Um, and I have an older brother, him and his friends played um, and a bunch of us on uh, that had older brothers, a bunch of us girls were like, hey, like we wanna be playing too. Um, so we actually started a club team when I was in high school and never looked back. Yeah, you, know, so you start the club team in high school. Uh, you end up going to Dominican College for your undergraduate. Um, was lacrosse a factor in why you chose Dominican? Yeah, yes. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I chose Dominican. Um, I stepped on campus, really enjoyed the coaches, uh, enjoyed the environment, um, wanted to study education. It was a great school that had a, a great education program. Um, and it was also a new program. Uh, and so that also excited me to have another opportunity to help build a new lacrosse program. You know, when you think back as a student athlete at Dominican, what are some experiences that still stick out? What are some of those favorite memories? Yeah, um, uh, my teammates, uh, any anytime I was with them. Uh, we actually, there's a few of us that still have a group chat. Um, you know, I've been out of college for more years than I would like to admit. Uh, but, you know, we still talk on a daily basis. Uh, you know, all of them have kids. We're all married, have full time jobs and, you know, are, are still constantly connecting with one another. Uh, you know, we talk about, yeah, just the, the fun times that we had. And, you know, most of the times we're talking about we're not on the field. It's just, again, our all of our time that we spent together. Yeah, I love that. I, I hear from so many people in, my, in the classes I teach, the student athletes that I work with here on campus. I mean, your team is a family. And some yeah. of your best friendships, you know, lifelong will, will go go forward that way. Um, great, great to do that and great to foster that throughout your four years of college here. You know, at what point in time in college did you start thinking like, hey, coaching could be an option for me? Yeah. So I always thought the dream was I was going to teach high school math and I was going to coach high school across uh, back at where I went to high school. That was uh, really the only option that I, I thought possible. Um Got into coaching, really, I worked at a summer camp uh, throughout college, and that's where I first learned about coaching, and I would, you know, teach lacrosse throughout the summer, teach a bunch of different sports. Uh, graduated college, really didn't give it much of a thought. Uh, went on, got my master's degree, and my high school coach was then coaching at the uh, college I was getting my master's at, at SUNY New Paltz, um, and ended up being an assistant for her. Um, and again, didn't really give it much thought, but throughout my life. Um, my first career, I ended up teaching outdoor education. Uh, and all throughout that time, lacrosse kept finding me. Um, you know, I kept on finding myself in situations where I was coaching lacrosse uh, for youth, high school, club, uh, doing private lessons and, and just decided to make the plunge. Yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, a coach has such an impact on our, on our student athletes, you know, for, for lifelong, uh, the life skills, everything that's taught to them. You know, coach, before you came to Muskingum, you, you were the head coach, successful head coach over to Earlham. Um, what was it about Muskingum when you first heard or saw the job was opening that initially attracted you to, to want to be a Muskie? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, I know the OAC is a really strong conference and I wanted to be a part of a conference that is regionally known for being a strong lacrosse powerhouse. Uh, and, you know, the more and more I looked into Muskegon, um, saw that it was a place that's invested in its student athletes. You know, the it excites me that we have that indoor facility that's coming and we have an opportunity to be practicing on turf when we get three inches of ice uh, in a day. Um, 
you know, and again, it's just a place that I can tell is invested in its students and very invested in its student athletes. And that was exciting. You know, the indoor facility you just mentioned, the uh, the Bullock Health and Wellness Complex slated to open in the fall of 2022. So you're not going to have to wait much longer. Yeah. Um, it, it's rising on our campus as we speak today. It's going to be a game changer, uh, not just for Muskingum, but for the region as a whole, as it will combine academics, athletics, um, and the diagnostic hub for athletic training uh, for rehabilitation projects as well. Um, let's take a take back here. When you think about your work, um, who's influenced you the most on the way you do your day to day stuff? Um, I don't know that I can pinpoint one person. I, I feel very fortunate. I've had a lot of great mentors in my life, uh, both in the lacrosse world and just in the coaching world um, and just have surrounded myself with really phenomenal mentors, not even in coaching. Um, so like, I, I don't know that I can pinpoint one person, but I definitely feel fortunate. Um, I have a lot of different mentors that I can go to for a lot of different things, just kind of based on what my question is. That's great. I mean, it's always great to have that network uh, as you build it forward and have people you can always uh, rely on uh, to be there when you need them. Uh, what about this coach? How do you like to start your day? Yeah, talking about coffee at the beginning of this. Love starting my day with a cup of coffee. Um, you know, if in an ideal world, sipping on a cup of coffee and cuddling with my dog. Uh, nothing, nothing makes me more excited than that. That's perfect. And after this interview, it's going to be sipping on some Jennings Java. Yeah, exactly. The dog. So we'll take care of that for you. Um, what about when you come to work? What is it that energizes you? Um, when I see something click at practice, you know, when we've been explaining something or, or an individual has been working on something and it like you see that moment that it, it makes sense and it all clicks and everything connects for them. Um, yeah, that just makes me really, really excited. And I ended practice last night telling the team, like, I am so hyped right now. Like, I think I could run through a brick wall. Uh, just, yeah, like I said, just things are, are starting to connect and it excites me. Well, that's great that's connecting right now because season opener about a week away from right now uh, when you will make your Muskingum debut here uh, next Sunday um, here on North at the North Turf Field. What about outside of work? What is it that, that you like? What is it that energizes you? Yeah, um, I love being outside, whether I'm, I'm going for a, a walk with my dog, uh, going for a hike, visiting different national parks, um, you know, and also just enjoy being around my, my friends and my family. They definitely energize me. Well, Muskingum is certainly located in an area where you can take advantage of the outdoor. Yeah. Uh, lots of opportunities right here with national parks. Um, what about what's a work related accomplishment that you're really proud of? Um, definitely have have a lot. Um, but I would say the thing that really stands out and again, just makes me excited. and I'm really proud of um, is when a former player reaches out to me, um, you know, to continue asking for advice, ask me to be a letter of recommendation, be a job reference for them. Um, you know, that is at the end of the day, what I see my, my job is, is to be their mentor. And I always tell them, I don't stop being a part of your life after you're done playing for me. Um, you know, so the fact that years after they're done playing for me, they still want to call me up and ask my opinion on something. Oh, I love it's that. Really I mean, cool. I'm you, it's, it's, you know, you're not just a coach for four years, you're a coach for life. Yeah. Um, and the impressions that you make on, on, the, on the young student athletes, the men and women here on our campus carry on throughout their entire life. Um, what's something that you've recently seen that make you smile? Um, I got to go back to, to practice the past two days. We uh, had that ice storm. Uh, we've been functioning um, inside um, and just, the past few days getting to be outside and seeing everybody excited to be out there. And again, just we've been working on things very small scale inside and just seeing things connect and work outside are just so exciting. Coach, what's something that most people don't know about you? Um, ooh, I've always, this is, this is super random. I always wanted to be a mascot. Like I want to be that person that puts on a head and nobody knows who's under there and they're doing silly, goofy, ridiculous things. Well, I can tell you, I can make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> I control Magnus around here and we have different people being Magnus. So if there's a day that you want to be Magnus, you just let me know and we will not tell anyone else. Yeah. And you can go out there and be the goofy Magnus having some fun, making people laugh. And everyone will always say, because it happens right now at our basketball games. People are always like, who's Magnus? Who's Magnus? I'm like, 
your mask that's like secret identity you don't yeah you don't know yep. it is. so we exactly can make that wish come true uh, on what you want to do um what about this when you were a kid growing up what was it that you wanted to do what did you think you were going to be um i wanted to be an actress or a basketball player in the wnba um side note i've never acted and i'm not a good basketball player but that's what i for sure thought i was going to be well, you can always intramurals. We have that here. At yeah. Next half teams. Uh, Coach Winters leads a pretty mean team over there of competitiveness. And then um, also the theater right here at Caldwell Hall. Yeah. Open auditions at times. So we can yeah. check, those check marks too. Um, if, if we're sitting around, I'm sitting around with your friends. Uh, we're, we're talking about Lindsay. What are three words your friends would use to describe you? Definitely loud. Um, my wife is constantly telling me to use my inside voice, um, goofy, um, and encouraging. Uh, great words there to use to describe you. Um, really tells you the impact you have on your friends and family. Um, what about this? We're making a movie and you're coming here and we're doing the Lindsay Grunfast movie. Uh, who's going to be the lead? Who's, who's playing you? Uh, I probably can't say myself, right? Cause again, my lifelong dream as a child was to be an actress. So it only makes sense that I am the lead in my own movie. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> you got to do it, uh, right? If, if that can't be the answer, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Okay, there we go. Um, what about this? You know, in the time of COVID, it seemed, people have kind of stayed inside a little bit more often than probably than, than they normally would. Uh, if you could only eat one item of food, um, what's it going to be if you were just in your house and had to have that stocked up? That's a tough question. Um uh, French fries. French fries, huh? <laughs> Do you have a favorite French fry out there? Like, no, I like to make them myself. Okay. I like to, yeah, just hand cut them and either cook them in the oven or put them in the air fryer. All right. Um, you know, the time of, of COVID too, the thing that's really rised up is the digital age. I mean, people, um, whether it's through streaming or through your phone, the way you stay connected with people, what are three apps that you have on your phone that you've got to have? Oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, I hate to admit this, but Twitter, uh, but especially today is opening day for Division One lacrosse uh, on the women's side, and so lacrosse Twitter is like a huge thing where co people are constantly tweeting back and forth at one another, tweeting about the games. Okay. Uh, so can't get rid of that. Uh, Google, I have too many questions and I need to be able to look it up. Um, and I would also say my messages. I am constantly trying to stay connected with my friends and family and also recruit. So can't get rid of that. Well, I love the Twitter answer because I see women's lacrosse is active on Twitter, um, active supporting fighting muskies and other, and all of our programs here on campus. And I love seeing that from our programs. Um, do you have a bucket. Do you have a bucket list? If you do, what's something on it or a couple things on it that you're still looking to cross off? Uh, I want to go to Australia. That's definitely on there. Uh, but I'm also terrified of snakes and spiders. And they have like the deadliest snake. So that's like a risk reward kind of thing. Um, and eventually when I retire, I want to live in an RV and I want to travel from national park to national park. Uh, specifically, I want to go to all the deserts. Wow. That's uh, awesome. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one there. Um, what about TV shows? There's something that, that you binge, something you watch. Um, yep. If you have been in my office or if you've been in my house, you know that it, it's friends. Uh, I've got friend stuff all over my house. Um, I don't buy the stuff. It just is constantly gifted to me. Yeah. Uh, but friends, yeah. That's great. I mean, I, I love friends growing up and watching it. Uh, nowadays, sometimes I mention friends in, in classes and kids are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Not that old, right? Yeah. Um, Let's, let's bring it back here to Muskingum here. And, you know, since taking over the helm, you, you came in in August. Um, what's been some of your favorite memories so far as you started developing this program into, into your vision? Yeah, um, I would say we've had some really great practices the past few days. And the team, you can tell, is really buying into the things that I am getting them to do and buying into one another and trusting the process and trusting one another. Um, you can see they're loosening up and having a little bit more fun with one another. Um, you know, we're starting to dive into making TikToks as a team. Um, so women's volleyball, we're coming for you. <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> but yeah, like I said, they're just they're buying into one another a lot more, which is exciting to see. Yeah, Coach, we mentioned a little bit earlier, I mean, your season's like right around the corner here. You've pretty much got your last weekend, and then it's all starting up. Um, what can the fans expect to see this year from our women's lacrosse team? Yeah, you're going to see a team that's going to work. Uh, they're going to work the entire 60 minutes that we're out on that field. Um, it doesn't matter if we're going to be up or if we're down. They're going to work, and they're going to work as a unit. Uh, so definitely really excited to to see them out there competing against somebody. You know, Coach, kind of off the sheet of the questions that, that we had talked about here, do you have anything on game days that you do to get ready for a game, or how do you get ready to go out there and coach the team? Um, that's a, a good question. i got to have my cup of coffee. Um, you know, if it's a, a 12 o'clock game like we open up on uh, the 20th or it's a 7 o'clock game, there's got to be a cup of coffee later on in the day. Um, the team knows that I like to go to bed early, so i got to get that uh, – that boost of energy later on in the day. Um, but no, definitely, I, I try to spend the day just honestly relaxing. Um, and I'm big on visualization. So I myself try to visualize what the game is going to look like from my perspective and things that I can do as a coach uh, to help us help us win that day. You know, if, if you're a, um, you know, a recruit, a, a, a a female student athlete around who's thinking that maybe maybe I need to check out Muskingum. Uh, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you to learn more about the program? Yeah, the best way send me a send me a text message. Uh, like I said before, that's one of the the apps I can't get rid of. Shoot me a text message. Uh, send me an email. Fill out the recruit questionnaire. Um, send us a DM on Twitter or Instagram. Uh, definitely open to any of the above options. You know, Coach, finally, just to, just to wrap things up, and you mentioned earlier about the new um, BHWC coming coming to play here in the fall of 2022. You know, a $30 million-plus facility being built right in the heart of our campus. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but how do you see that facility having an impact on the women's lacrosse program and Muskingum? Yeah, um, you know, on those days when we can't be outside, it's an opportunity for us to do what we're doing outside, but now we can do it inside, um, you know, and also my hope is that we can host clinics and we can host prospect days in there. We can get younger kids within the community onto Muskegon's campus and have my players teach those younger kids, right? In New Concord, it's not a big sport, um, you know, so trying to open it up to the community and, and get people involved and get people interested, maybe in that like winter time frame when there's not a whole lot going on outside. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, the facility is going to have the indoor tracks and have 60 yards of turf inside the track, uh, workout areas, uh, classrooms, diagnostic hub. Uh, it's going to combine so many elements, which are going to be so important uh, to help programs build and to attract recruits here to campus. Uh, Coach, I want to thank you for taking time today. Hope we had some fun uh, talking some women's across and letting people get to know you a little bit better uh, as a coach. Again, JenningsJava.com for your freshest roast. And I know you're going to be hitting up some Java today. Uh, so we're going to hook you up with some of some of his uh, specialty roast here. Uh, but thank you again for taking time. I look forward to getting out there this spring, uh, watching the team compete and working with Women's Across program. Great. Thank you. Go right. Muskies. Go Muskies.